Many different animals exist. But one thing they have in common is that they're all made up of cells. Cells are microscopic. They're too small to see with the naked eye. Cheek cells are a typical animal cell and are easy to collect. Wipe them onto a slide. Place a cover slip over the top and they're ready to view under the microscope. These are two human cheek cells magnified hundreds of times. All animal cells have a cell membrane, a thin outer skin. The tiny dense blob is the nucleus, the control centre of the cell. The cytoplasm, a jelly-like substance filling the cell, is where all the chemical reactions happen. The tiny specks are mitochondria. Their job is to release energy from glucose. At greater magnification, the mitochondria are like moving threads. These cheek cells look flat under the microscope. In reality, they're three-dimensional. But not all cells look the same. Different cells have different jobs to do. Red blood cells carry oxygen around the body. Under a microscope, they look donut-shaped. This gives them a larger surface area for absorbing oxygen. Magnified thousands of times, their shape is even more distinct. Nerve cells have a completely different job to do. They transmit nerve impulses to and from the brain. So these cells are long and thin. The function of an animal cell determines its structure. Sperm cells have long tails, which enable them to swim towards egg cells. Other cells combine to form tissues. This is muscle tissue. At greater and greater magnification, you can begin to see the individual cells. They join together to make stringy fibres. This tissue forms the inner surface of the large intestine. The cells here have a very different shape. The large intestine is designed to absorb excess water from the food passing through. So the cells are rounded and arranged to increase the surface area. Looking at a cross-section through the intestine, you can see how different tissues fit together. The top surface is folded and contains cells which produce enzymes to break down food. It's here that nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream. Underneath is a layer of muscle tissue. This contracts and relaxes to move food along the digestive system. The human body is made of many different tissues, all working together to keep us alive. And the basic building block for each tissue is the cell. One thing all plants have in common is the ability to convert light energy from the sun into food energy. Some plants are just one cell big. Others are made up of many thousands, one of the most powerful microscopes available. This is a slice through the same leaf, magnified many thousands of times with a scanning electron microscope. You can see the individual cells and how they differ in shape and size. This is an epidermal cell. A layer of these cells joined together forms the surface of the leaf. In the lower half, there's a group of strange-looking cells which make up the spongy mesophyll. There are large air spaces in between. This makes it easier for the plant to take in carbon dioxide for photosynthesis. 
the top surface is a row of elongated palisade cells. It's here that photosynthesis takes place. So in a leaf, there are many different types of cell, but there are certain features which all plant cells have in common. A typical plant cell is like a box. Take a look inside and you'll find a nucleus, the control center of the cell. Surrounding it is the cytoplasm, where all the chemical reactions which keep the cell alive take place. The green blobs are chloroplasts, which are the site of photosynthesis. A vacuole takes up most of the space inside the cell. It's filled with a solution of sugars and salts. Surrounding the cytoplasm is a cell membrane. And on the outside, a rigid cell wall gives the cell support. The scanning electron microscope shows the three-dimensional shape of the cells, but it doesn't show what's inside. By removing a thin piece of onion tissue, just one cell thick, and placing it onto a slide, it's ready to view under a light microscope. The cell walls are easily visible. The vacuole is pushing the cytoplasm to the outer edge of the cell. Squashed to the side is the nucleus. With a closer view, you can see the activity in the cytoplasm. It's been speeded up to make it more obvious. This is a microscopic view of a tiny moss leaf. Just like the onion tissue, it's one cell thick. Each cell is packed full of chloroplasts. They contain chlorophyll, a green pigment which gives plants their colour. If a cell has many chloroplasts, its main purpose is to photosynthesize. In a plant like this, the cells in the roots, the stems and the leaves all have different jobs to do. The surface of a leaf is dotted with holes, known as stomata. The cells either side change the size of the hole to control the loss of water. Leaves also have hair cells for protection. They help prevent insects from landing and attacking the plant. This leaf hair is just one cell big. Roots have hairs too. These are vital for the plant to absorb minerals. The many hair cells on this single root increase its surface area, making it easier to absorb nutrients. The stem transports water and minerals to the leaves through long tubes called xylem. These are particularly obvious in celery. Place a few stems into a dye and the leaves and xylem turn blue. Xylem are reinforced tubes. Under an electron microscope, their thickened cell walls look like coiled springs. This is a fertilized human egg cell. It quickly divides into two cells, which continue to divide, eventually forming a baby made up of millions of cells. In order to grow, an organism's cells must multiply. These are skin cells. It's the same for plants. For this root to grow, its cells must be multiplying over and over again. They're reproducing themselves by a process known as mitosis. Mitosis produces new cells, which are identical to each other. To understand what's happening when a cell divides in this way, we need to take a look inside the nucleus. The nucleus of every living cell contains chromosomes. These thread-like structures are made of DNA and contain all the information necessary for the cell to survive. This is what they look like in real life. When a cell's about to divide, the chromosomes become shorter and fatter. They line up along the center. 
before separating to opposite ends of the cell. A human cell normally has 46 chromosomes, but to make it easier to follow the process, imagine a cell with just three. Before a cell divides, each chromosome has to make an identical copy of itself. The twin armed chromosomes then line up along the center. Invisible cell fibers pull them apart. Membranes form around the two sets of chromosomes, forming the nuclei and cell membrane of the two new cells. Mitosis is a very organized process, making sure that the new cells are identical to each other and identical to the original. This whole process has been speeded up many times. It usually happens over a few hours. This type of cell division is how all animals and plants grow. These are the cells in an onion root tip. They've been stained with a dye which helps show up the chromosomes. You can see how they're all at slightly different stages of mitosis. Another type of cell division is called meiosis, but this only happens in the reproductive organs of animals and plants. In a flower like this, the male reproductive organ is called the anther. It produces pollen grains, the equivalent to an animal's sperm. The female reproductive organ is called the carpal. Inside the swollen ovary at the base are egg cells. Pollen, egg cells and sperm are all produced by meiosis. Imagine a cell with just four chromosomes. As with mitosis, each produces an identical copy of itself. Chromosomes belong in pairs. One half of the pair, shown in blue, will originally have come from the father. The other one is from the mother. In meiosis, the chromosomes pair up with their partner along the center of the cell. These pairs split apart, some of the mother chromosomes going with some of the father chromosomes. But it doesn't end here. These cells now split mitosis style. The twin-armed chromosomes line up along the center of the cell before being pulled apart. From just one cell, four new cells are created. Meiosis produces cells which have half the usual number of chromosomes. It takes place during the formation of sex cells, like eggs and sperm. Why is it important that the number of chromosomes in egg and sperm cells is halved?